Hello everybody, in this video I am going to be making a mixed media journal cover with you using bits from my November design team kit from Thompson's Craft Supplies which featured the AB Studio Carry Me Slowly paper pack which I just showed you a little bit of there. There's a paper in there which is basically designed for to be to be become a journal cover and being a journal maker myself I just I had to I couldn't resist and I'm also going to be making for the first time on camera a curved spine journal now I can't credit myself for, for the idea for this or anything but I can't really credit any other what someone else in particular because I kind of watch a bunch of tutorials and then sort of merge them together to find my own personal way of doing it, if you know what I mean. But if you type in a curved spine journal cover tutorial, if you want something more in depth and more detailed, and there's plenty of really, really good ones out there. Um, so to start off for my uh, cover, I'm cutting two chipboard pieces to A5 size because those are the, the covers on that 12 by 12 sheet, they are A5. And then I'm going to stick each one of those down onto a piece of A4 cardstock to use that to wrap around the chipboard. It just it gives it a nice, nice, uh, nicer edge and uh, just a nicer finish. It's better for putting mediums and stuff on. It just it makes it more finished and more complete in general. So I always wrap them in cardstock like this. I was using gloss gel medium to stick the chipboard to the paper. I tend to fold in the long edges first and then we, as you see when I fold them in I then use my bone folder just to kind of press in that little corner um, so it folds nicely on the short edges as well. And then of course I'm going to repeat the process on that second piece of A5 chipboard. So to make the spine I'm going to use a piece of the like the tubing, the inner part of a thing of kitchen roll or paper towel, whatever you call it, just that inner tube. Um, same kind of thing as the inside of a toilet roll, just longer. Just so happened that the, the kitchen roll I had used and got the inner bit from was exactly the height of A5. So that was a and perfect. I didn't have to trim it down at all. So when you've got your tube, you just cut the straightest line you can up the center. Then you're going to want to flatten it out to measure the width. I imagine most of them are the same sort of size, but just measure it just in case. Mine was six inches, so a perfect kind of number to play around with. And I am going to score mine at three quarters of an inch and then another half inch on top of that at either side. Um, you can kind of figure out exactly what uh, size you want to use personally. I found this was a really good size to get a nice wide spine you could make the score lines bigger if you wanted a smaller spine but you have to keep in mind that um where it sort of folds over you're going to lose that from the spine so where i fold in the smaller part the half inch part that's going to also take away from the spine so you can see that where i fold it in on itself there and make a little groove either side and then i'm going to add my adhesive into that little groove space now i am using not my gloss gel medium for this i'm using the heavy body gel for this just because it is the stickiest of the sticky stuff it is thick with two c's i mean it's not don't google it with two c's but you know what i mean it's like the consistency of blancmange and it's so super strong so I know that that spine is not going anywhere. So you wanna add your sort of book cover panel into that little groove there, have adhesive on both sides of where that is scored and just kind of hold it in place with some clips or whatever. Uh, sometimes you might have to hold it in place, just hold it for you know, 20, 30 seconds or so with your fingers in the middle section. Um, you may notice on the side of my panels there is a little bit of uh, messed up looking cardboardy stuff which is yes I did mess up my first try of doing this <laughs> I cut I scored my original tube at the uh, the wrong places or wrong sizes or something but you know these things happen so here I am just clipping everything in place holding it in place in a couple of places and then I'm going to leave that to dry for a good I think I left it overnight and then even a little bit more so it might have been something like 20 hours or something mad like that but just to you know really really make sure that is completely dry that spine and the panels are completely attached they will be combined forevermore and there I'm just adding something heavy in certain places just to make sure it's not going to pop up anywhere so when I came back to it however many hours later it was all completely dried and ready for me to put some fabric on the spine because not a very attractive spine to look at the sort of toilet tube colour. <laughs> um, so I am going to choose this lovely gold 
and black fabric. This is, I have no idea where this is from. This is all just like vintage fabrics and stuff I have um, in my shop stock for my store. So I'm gonna use this for the outer part of the spine. And I'm also gonna cover the inner spine as well, just with this sort of satiny, it's a very sort of light gray, jade green sort of color. Uh, the inside you can do a little bit messy, it doesn't really matter because it's not really gonna be seen depending on a, how you make the journal in regards to the signatures and stuff. I'll talk about that in a second, but um, I am just, I just cut that roughly to size. I am adding my gloss gel medium. I'm back to the normal gel medium now, making sure it's in those little grooves at the side where the panels and the spine attach to each other. And then when I stick down the material, I'm gonna use um, my bone folder just to make sure that those, you know, it's really getting into those grooves and it really sticks in there. Cause if it doesn't, when you then move around the journal later, when it dries, it's gonna like crack and move and bubble and it's just, it won't, it won't look very nice. So once that is all stuck on there, I'm not gonna wait for it to dry mostly because I'm lazy, but it doesn't really matter at this stage. I'm gonna cut uh, slits up in the top so you get sort of three pieces to fold over the other side. If you don't cut these slits, you kind of, it doesn't give it as much sort of room to move around later on. I don't know if that makes any sense. And people who understand material and stuff are like, why are you saying this in the weirdest possible way? But I don't know the proper words for these kind of things. But yeah, if you just folded it over when you then folded the spine and stuff, then it might, move the material so basically just cutting those slits in gives it more give um you can see it's really really messily done it doesn't matter because the fabric for the outside of the spine is just going to completely cover that up so i didn't worry about this looking attractive at all and then i'm pretty much going to repeat exactly the same thing with the fabric that i want on the outside of the journal but when it comes to doing the folding over at the top i'm just going to be a little bit more careful make it a little bit more neater and prettier because you're going to see that part it is going to obviously going to be on the inside of the journal and the signatures or your pages or whatever are going to cover it up so it doesn't matter that much but it can be seen if you really look for it. As you can see, I use my bone folder just to get into the grooves where the spine meets the panels. And yeah, I'm just being generally a bit more careful, a bit neater and everything. Now, little side note here, I'm not gonna be doing the pages or signatures in this video. Um, there are a couple of ways of doing it. Um, with a curved spine, a lot of people don't sew the signatures straight into the curved spine. Now, I plan to do that because I like signatures that you can see i just prefer it that's my personal preference but if you want hidden signatures there are various ways of doing that and you would want to put those in uh well basically don't do what i'm about to do which is add your colors and your inside panels and stuff at this stage you want to do that after you've stuck in your signatures to the spine basically it's a bit too complex to explain it in this video, especially when I'm not doing it on screen. Plenty of videos out there to show you how to do it, but all I'm just saying is what I'm about to do here where I add these pretty panels and stuff in, if you do want hidden signatures, don't do this stage on the inside until you've got your signatures in, is what I'm trying to get at. So I needed something pretty for the inside as well as the outside of the journal. So I chose another paper from the Carry Me Slowly pack and found this really lovely blue one, which went, I think, quite nicely with the front and back covers as well. But you don't want any of that white cardstock showing. So I am grabbing Distress Oxide in Weathered Wood to go around all the areas where the cardstock, or the pattern card, sorry, isn't going to cover. So I actually cut them a little bit small by accident for the inside covers. So I'm covering more area in the ink, making sure I'm doing the edge of the journal because that's really, really important. I think a lot of people sometimes forget to do that and it's just, you don't want a stark white edge that would look, that would look rather bad. And then I'm just holding up those journal cover pieces from the paper pack against there, figuring out how much room they're gonna take up, how much ink I need to put around the edges. I did actually trim them down ever so slightly just by a couple of millimeters because I was worried that they were they were basically sitting flush against the edge of the journal and I was worried that in doing that they might get worn 
after a while so if I had them just ever so slightly in so they're not at the right at the edge they're not going to get scuffed and all that kind of thing and I thought I'd go around the edges of these with the weathered wood as well because why not and then I'm going to paste all of those panels on with again with my gloss gel medium I'm making sure I get glue right to the edge of every single piece so you know the edge is really really glue down don't start to stick up and fray and curl or anything like that. I am undecided about this journal, about whether I'm gonna keep it for myself or make it up to have as a really big junk journal for my Etsy shop. I just, I can't decide. I am personally completely in love with it, but I don't tend to use really wide spine journals myself. Um, and I've or I've just been in an A5 journal and I like to change sizes a lot That's the only thing that's put me off really is the fact that I'm already in A5 at the moment And I like changing sizes every single time I change journals, but I am I don't I'm not trying to you know blow my own horn or anything here But I just love the way this turns out. So yeah, I'm undecided About whether this is going to go in the shop or not we will we will watch this space so going to leave those for a little while to dry and then it is time to get mixed media -y on the front and back covers so first up i'm going to add a layer of clear gesso i will say by the way i was undecided about which side to have at the front and which to have at the back i think i actually did it um in the reverse way that you're supposed to because the one i've got on the back on the left hand side has got like that banner thing that i think you would put a title in or something but i don't know i just liked the other side as a front more i can't really explain it so when the clear gesso was dry i'm just going to add a little bit of stenciling with this tim holtz kind of very fine intricate damasky sort of stencil and some gold and nouveau embellishment mousse uh, mine has got uh, quite dry and crumbly so you can see I'm putting quite a lot of effort into stenciling it I really must get some more because it's one of my favorite things to use but they don't seem to have a very long shelf life so uh, I think I've heard that Nouveau is aware of the problem um, I don't know if they're trying to fix it or not I've seen some various tips and tricks to uncrumble or undry out your embellishment mousse but none of them have worked for me so far so if you have any tips do let me know next I felt like doing some heat embossing I should have done the heat embossing first before I did the stenciling because obviously when I put the powder on the cover and then pour it off it gets all trapped in between the the stenciled bits but in places that actually kind of works because I am kind of going from a distressed ever so slightly steampunky patinery sort of thing so where the embossing powder did get trapped in the stenciled areas I do end up kind of liking that look uh, the stamp I'm using is a Kazercraft one. I'm not using the butterfly bit, just like the the gardeny, uh, what they called, like fancy, pretty garden fence netting stuff. Trellis? Is that a trellis? I don't know. But anyway, I'm using that, but not the butterfly bit, just the pattern. And then I'm using Lindy's embossing powder in, I think the colour is Don't Scream aquamarine something silly like that they have the silliest of names for their colors and then yeah so I've just done that all over in various bits very very patchy then I wanted to add some simple simple sam simple stamping there we go this is a prima text stamp it looks like a sort of a dictionary entry or something I thought that would look quite nice on a journal cover I started off using archival ink in shadow grey because I wanted quite a light color but it just seeped in and you couldn't see the stamping. So I don't know what that was about. So I went to my good old faithful stays on stone gray ink and that stamped wonderfully. So there's all sorts of bits of stamping all over. And then I needed some sort of 3D things to put on my cover. So these chipboards, which I think are from 13 Arts, they came with my kit. I chose these two sort of mandala doily kind of pieces. I'm just poking out all the little, little in-betweeny chipboard pieces there. At first I was going to have the big one on the front and the little one on the back, but actually I thought I want the front to be more 3D and have more of a wow factor to it. So actually I was going to have those on top of each other. And then on the back I cut out one of those smaller little journal panels from that same sheet and I'm just playing around with some metal embellishments here from my stash to add those um, so I found one to put on top of the mandala pieces found one to put on the back and then I have those gorgeous filigree ones to put on the corners and I was just like yes let's do it so all of the outside corners have one of those on I am in love with them 
Then that little frame I put on the back piece there, that is from Hobbylicious. I did, you can see I've put that memories thing on top of the mandala pieces. I, I would, most of the time making this, I thought I was gonna use that and then I don't end up using it, but you'll see as we go. Um, I'm adding just tiny little bits of uh, heavy cardboard, you know, like packing cardboard between those bits, just to give the whole thing a bit more dimension and stuff. And then adding, the, doing the same there with the metal piece. So yeah, they really, really stick out and stuff. It's not just, they're all flat against each other. And then just sticking down that panel piece on the back and adding my frame thingy, wood frame and the metal piece on top of that. I put a cardboard, tiny little piece of cardboard on the middle, mid, bit of bit, middle of the metal embellishment. So it would lie flush against the frame. And then I left that all. No, wait, no, lying. Gonna add the filigree corners first. Decided to get the ultra thick, the heavy body gel out for these just because they're very, very delicate and they're ever so slightly curved and you want them to go flat to stick on. So that's why I went for the heavy body gel instead. And as you saw, something heavy on all of those corners. Then I left that overnight to dry and here I am the next day adding colours and doing kind of the most fun part of the whole thing if you like. Adding uh, just a, a layer of heavy gesso to all of those pieces there so they're going to be ready to have colours added to them. I'm going to start off, this is the Prima, where's my list gone? Uh, Prima Liquid Acrylic in Deep Turquoise. So I'm just going to paint that on well just over everything really so just adding a layer of that over everything where i paint on the frame on the back there was just like unless i spent hours and hours and hours being really careful and fiddly there was no way of doing it without getting paint on the the panel behind it so i just kind of gave up and was like there's gonna be color on this panel it's gonna look messy that's what we're going for. So when the first layer of that was dry, I am adding a little bit of Lindy's spray in the color Tibetan Poppy Teal. And you can see where I spray it on, on the back piece there, it's going everywhere. Then drying that. And then I realized though that I hadn't done anything to the edges of the chipboard. And so when you looked at it from like the side, you were just seeing that sort of chipboard color. Um, that just made it look really unfinished. So I'm carefully, ish carefully ish going around to make sure that there is a layer of that paint on all of the sides and edges and there's like you're not going to get any bits of chipboard color just surprising you out of all that blue just make yeah like i said it makes it look more finished more professional and stuff uh, again i'm going to dry that i added some spray this is the fabrica de Kuru chameleon spray in it's got a weird name like something something bounty again i've got a list oh along the coast of bounty and here I am having lots of fun with waxes. So I'm gonna constantly change between waxes. Three of them are Prima. I've got Prima Mint, Sparkle, Old Denim, and Old White, which is matte. And then I have the Pentar Gold Wax. And I am just going back and forth and adding more bits of each color and stuff. So I'm adding lots of the dark blue on my bluer pieces just to give them lots of depth. Then lots and lots of gold, because I just love lots of shiny pretty gold elements. I wanted to colour the filigree corners gold rather than the brassy colour but I'm also adding little hints of the mint and the denim because it gives it a slight patina effect and yes I just did this for a very long time. I had a great time with my waxes <laughs> going back and forth adding lots of little bits and pieces. I only add tiny little bits of the white um, because it wasn't really the effect I was going for, just in a couple of places it gave it that sort of aged effect. And I'm also going to add little bits of the wax straight onto the cover itself, not just the, the chipboard pieces and stuff, just again to make it look old and aged. And I just spent ages doing this and changing it up in certain places, adding more gold, adding more blue, just lots of depth, so much depth of colour, so many little things going on. Um, I think I must have accidentally deleted the footage, but at the top of the screen there, you can see two of those glass cabochon, melange, whatever they're called things, beady things. Um, I'm going to add those to the front and back panels, but I, to, so that you can't see through them, I added some of the liquid acrylic, just painted it straight on the back of those, but I added it in a way 
where it was thicker in some places. So when you see through it, you can see the colour, but it kind of looks a bit swirly and interesting because it was, you know, it was a thin layer of paint in one part and thick layers. And you'll see in the pictures at the end, but that's what I did. They're just drying up the top there. I think I'm nearly done with my wax stage. I must be close to done. <laughs> anyway, there is where I decided the memories thing just, it's cute, but I prefer just that glass bead in the center. I just think it makes, it's, it's just the aesthetic I prefer. It looks like more of an old antique thing made into a journal rather than something that's made purposely as a journal, if that makes any sense. I'm just gonna add a few things to the, uh, the inside here just to make it look complete and like I haven't neglected it. Spraying on some of that, some more of that Lindy spray and the Fabrica Decoro Chameleon spray. Then I'm gonna get out my waxes again. I'm just gonna use the old denim Prima and the Pentart Gold on here, just around the edges and stuff. Just again, it makes it look really like old, aged, distressed, and more interesting really and I just love the combo of the teals and the navy blue and the gold and it's just <sighs> oh yeah and going around the edges as well so it has a nice uh, sort of distressed gold edge around the whole journal I think that looks really really pretty and I think I'm almost done I am just going to finish off by adding oh well, apparently some more blue wax just I just I can't stop with the waxes I'm just obsessed I love change they just they add so much depth I love it. But eventually I am going to be done with that. And then the final thing I'm going to add is just those little gold, gold, not gold, those little class uh, cabochon things just in the center of each. I just think it just finishes it off nicely, gives it a slightly mystical vibe maybe. It's not overly complex. I'm not going to add any nouveau drops, no splatters, no, none of that. I'm just going to leave it at that. And I am really, really so happy with the result and I had a great time making it playing with all the gold and the chipboard and all of the things so there we go I really hope you enjoyed watching please let me know if you have any questions or anything like that any comments anything you like links to the products will be in the description box as well as the corresponding blog post if you want a better look at the pictures or anything like that and I think that is going to be it from me. So please uh, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, chat to me down in the comments. I'm going to go. Thank you again. Bye bye.